Pro golfers pride themselves on having integrity. But with that being said, we've seen some pro golfers make some questionable choices on and off the golf course. And sometimes those choices resulted in arrests and even jail time. Keeping that in mind, here are six embarrassing pro golfer arrests. Robert Gomez. Robert Gomez is a three-time PGA Tour winner who was allegedly seen touching the buttocks of an unidentified female victim at a pool party located in the Bay Hill neighborhood. When officers arrived on the scene, Gomez was lying on a medical stretcher after being grabbed around the neck by a male who witnessed this incident. Gomez allegedly fell to the ground and was admitted to the hospital according to the incident report. Earlier in the evening, Gomez was allegedly in a pool where he reached up from the pool and grabbed the victim's top, which resulted in exposure. Gomez allegedly asked the victim to join him in the pool and began making kissing faces. The victim confirmed to the officers that she was not related to Gomez or in a relationship with the professional golfer. Law enforcement then questioned Gomez, who was intoxicated according to the report, and he told officers that he couldn't remember a single thing. The next day, he was released from the hospital and arrested on misdemeanor battery charges. Bay Hill is also where Gomez achieved one of his greatest achievements on the PGA Tour. At the 1990 Nestle Invitational, now the Arnold Palmer Invitational, Gomez holed a 7-iron for Eagle on the 72nd hole at Bay Hill to defeat Greg Norman by one shot. A plaque actually commemorates this achievement on the 18th fairway. Although Bay Hill is associated with one of Gomez's greatest achievements, I think after this Bay Hill incident, it kind of cancels it out. Angel Cabrera. It could potentially be a few more years before the two-time major champion Angel Cabrera tees up the ball once again. Angel Cabrera is serving time in prison in Argentina and was sentenced to an additional two more years and four months of prison time for assaulting Michaela Escudero, a former girlfriend. Cabrera was already serving time for assaulting, threatening, and harassing his former partner, who he was seeing between 2016 and 2018. Many say prison is bad, but it's not the case. Prison has done me good, Cabrera said at trial, according to the local press. Charlie Epps, Cabrera's longtime instructor and friend, said that he and Cabrera's supporters are encouraged that his sentence could be reduced to just one more year for good behavior. He says prison has done him well and that he needed it, and boy do I know that, says Epps. First year, he was embarrassed and didn't want any company, but now this past year, he's accepted a few visits from his friends and they see he's well, they see him, a guy that has learned from this. He did a couple of dumb things that he should know not to do and he repents that alcoholism was such a wicked disease. Epps said that Cabrera, who last competed on the Champions Tour at the Pure Insurance Open in September of 2020, still dreams of playing golf when he's released from jail. There's been cases before where people get in trouble and they live for another day. So I'm praying for that, Epps said. Cabrera, who's in his 50s, is losing what's considered to be some of the peak years for players on the PGA Tour champions. He won the 2007 US Open and the 2009 Masters and on top of that, 53 professional tournaments worldwide. Robert Allenby. After missing the cut at the 2016 John Deere Classic, Robert Allenby headed to a casino in Rock Island, Illinois. He wound up the next morning being arrested and booked for disorderly conduct and criminal trespassing. Allenby then spent a short time in jail before bonding out. The Australian golfer has been a PGA Tour regular for many years and played for Team International in the President's Cup six times. This Illinois arrest happened about a year after a bizarre incident in Hawaii following the Sony Open. Allenby awoke battered and disoriented in a Honolulu park. He claimed he'd been drugged, beaten, and robbed. However, Allenby's own caddy doubted that story, but police did eventually arrest a man caught using Allenby's credit cards. So, who knows who's telling the truth here, but if his own caddy doesn't believe him, I'm going with the caddy on this one. Next up, we have one of the craziest stories involving a pro golfer on this list. But before we get into it, make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We appreciate you taking the time to watch our videos and we appreciate your support. Now, let's get back to our video. Tommy Ganey. 
In December of 2019, pro golfer Tommy Ganey, who's famously known as Tommy Two Gloves, was arrested in a major prostitution sting in Florida. According to officials, Ganey was arrested for soliciting a prostitute and faced a first-degree misdemeanor solicitation charge. This sting operation was a six-day investigation using undercover detectives to target prostitution, human trafficking, and child predators. TMZ Sports obtained the arrest video from the prostitution bus and it's clear as day that Tommy Ganey offered $60 for sexual acts to an undercover officer posing as a sex worker. During this exchange, which was captured by a hidden surveillance camera, Ganey negotiates a price for a quick visit and then tells the officer he's in town for the rest of the week, clearly implying he could be a repeat customer. According to the police report, after Ganey handed over the cash, cops busted in and arrested the pro golfer. Jail records show that he was booked on December 8th and then was released on December 9th after posting bail. The sheriff on duty said he's married. He told us he was here for a charity golf event and it was supposed to be in the next morning tee off. He didn't make it. He was a scratch. We charged him with soliciting. He missed his tee time the next morning. Ganey has been a pro golfer since 1997 and joined the PGA Tour in 2008 where he gained notoriety for wearing gloves on both his hands. Now he's never won a major tournament but he's become a fan favorite for the way he dresses and plays and in particular he has a pretty unique swing. In January of 2020, Ganey won on the Corn Ferry Tour which was his first professional win since 2012. John Daly John Daly has had a legendary golf career, yet he's gotten into some trouble along the way. From alcohol issues and gambling addictions, John Daly actually said in his autobiography that he estimated to have lost 50 to 60 million dollars in gambling alone. Daly burst onto the golf scene by winning the 1991 PGA Championship, but his first off-course problem soon arose. He was arrested and charged with a third-degree assault late in 1992 for allegedly throwing his then-wife into a wall after smashing and breaking things throughout their house. Daly has always denied this assault charge. Then again in 2009, Daly spent the night in jail in North Carolina after passing out from extreme intoxication at a Hooters restaurant. Well, can't say we all haven't been there, I understand that. Daly did not face charges for this, but police did book him into jail for the night to sleep off the alcohol. Tiger Woods Tiger Woods was arrested on suspicion of a DUI in Jupiter, Florida. He was arrested at 7 a.m. and police records show that he was jailed from 7.18 a.m. before being released on his own at 10.50 a.m. It's embarrassing for Tiger, something that you can't go back and change. Woods' longtime friend told the Golf Channel, I've been there myself, but it was a turning point in my life. Hopefully it's something he'll learn from, grow from, and take responsibility for and use it to make some changes. Police said the golfer was found asleep at the wheel, the car was stopped in the right lane and partially in the bike lane. Woods, who allegedly had extremely slow and slurred speech, stated that he did not know where he was according to the police report. Woods had changed his story of where he was going and where he was coming from. He then asked how far he was from his house so clearly he had no idea where he was going. Woods had a bit of a cocktail in his system at this point. He had two types of sleeping drugs, two painkillers, and the active ingredient for cannabis in his system when he was arrested. Later in court, Woods said little besides yes as he was asked a series of procedural questions from the judge, including if he was voluntarily choosing to take a plea agreement. Woods then said no when asked if he was currently under any substances that would impair his judgment. Tiger Woods also agreed to undergo a 12-month probation program for first-time offenders and pay a $250 fine. He then had to complete DUI school, 50 hours of community service, and will undergo random drug testing. The judge then warned Woods that if he violated his probation, he could be sent to jail for up to 90 days. Woods then released a statement saying, I understand the severity of what I did and I take full responsibility for my actions. Thanks for watching our video. If you haven't yet, drop us a like, leave us a comment, and if you're looking for more golf content, don't forget to subscribe.